Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to the International 2017 Stream C. We're going to be taking a look at game number two, Digital Chaos facing off against Virtus Pro. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Mr. Merlini. A oh, man, we're seeing the silencer again. Do you think DC have a different plan? Something else up their sleeves? It's looking really similar so far. They won't let the mid lane get crushed. Okay. If I bet has a bad game, you're going to have a bad time. Man stands ready. Well, a different opening for Virtus Pro. Now, here's the real question. Do they do the same thing they did at the Summit and never play the same hero no, twice? It's <laughs> okay. not worth the... <laughs> The money is way worth way more than the procedure to it. <laughs> okay, let's just put it that way. Fair enough. Well, they're starting off at least in somewhat similar. It's going to be a dark seer and a Sven. Uh, certainly a strong combination, and they can follow it up with a lot of different team fight heroes depending upon what they need. Silence is really bad at stopping the Sven. The queen of wow. Pain. First phase quap. Now this is something that we saw more often happen in Southeast Asia in the TI qualifiers. They would take one of Quap or Lena because they were like two of the strongest laning heroes in the game, um, and then they would basically give up the other. Uh, do you think that that's remaining. still viable at all? Like, what's the worry in, in picking a Quap this early? Five you get Viper. <laughs> so is that the ban now? Do you ban out Viper? Viper hey, Razor? Yes, they should. Considering what happened last game, okay, yeah. they immediately ban it out, so that's good. Uh, Razor is not good. Razor, I think, well, actually, Quap's one of her, his worst matchup. Uh, who else is good? Lena, I would suppose. I don't know. They... You don't necessarily have to focus on the middle lane that much. I, I also think they rendered the silencer fairly useless, too. Ten when silencer has to blow remaining. global defensively and nothing happens, you're also going to lose it. Five so that's kind of what happened to them. Remaining. Like, they need to use it to save someone from a lasso or something like that. But right now, it looks like they're going to rent at you. They have Warcry, they have Surge, so they're going to have heroes all up in your face all the time. DC's and you need some sort of, like, a combo breaker, some sort of distance maker in the team fight so that you can create space in between your range heroes and these melee heroes or else they're just going to do way too much damage people can get uh, vacuumed in well we'll have to watch and wait and like bkb enigma that's that's a hero that stops people from running it okay we'll get destroyed what about something like a, a wyvern we've been seeing that happen uh, occasionally DC's bkb pearson disable good against right click lineups i don't like it because of a sven Sven's okay. Warcry renders it very You don't really want to rely too much on that. So Clockwork, I think, is uh, more along those veins of, like, we have Cog. Cog causes a lot of issues for the team. need a lot of mobility in the team. You can't bypass the Cogs. You need to buy a link, and it's going to slow down your game a lot and just overall make maneuvering. Ten seconds remaining. I mean, conceivably, they could still Five end up doing, you know, a, another type of big initiation offlaner as well if they wanted to here. Like, we could go back to something like we saw in the first series, a Centaur. Um, ooh, a DK taken. More of the same type of style from Virtus Pro against somebody that just slowly whittles people away. Whittles away towers more often than not with his ulti. Yeah, here you want, like, heavy magical damage. So, like, AA I would think would be really good. You have the spell Amplify and you have the ulti. However, they already have both their supports, most likely. So, what other, like, I also think uh, Batrider for themselves would actually be pretty good here. Um, to kite the Sven, BKB, Piercing Disable, like, zero physical damage coming out from that hero. So, very good versus heavy armor. Uh... Lineup, also pure damage is useful. Timber Saw might be mm. worthy of consideration, although it would struggle a lot versus the Disruptor, I would say, uh, game. But, good pick. Mason likes Weaver a lot. He plays Juggernaut sometimes, too. Two heroes are all. He plays Slark, not good. I'm trying to think of any other heroes that... Because Mason needs a hero right now. They need... They're not going to get the last pick, so... Pros, turn to Bad okay. You said that this would be another yeah, good thing. That's fine for them. I'm still worried about Mason's pick, though. Like you want, you don't want physical damage. They've already committed very heavy for physical mitigation. Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with BKBs at some point, but you still need you still need uh, some sort of magic damage. Ten seconds. I guess Luna. Remaining. Luna's pretty good. I like Luna a lot, actually. That could be pretty interesting. Five yeah, it's a decent remaining. amount of magical damage there as well. Uh, Marana might not be that bad too. I like Marana a lot because it kind of fits their theme, their lineup of keep away with damage from afar ranged magic. 
He's he played Venno a decent amount too. Uh, Bristleback is another one, which might not. Don't it's like not good against Sven. So I guess uh, Venno is all right. I don't. I think it might just struggle in the. They haven't picked uh, what hero yet. Ten Lil could also be playing Sven. I haven't seen him play support Sven before. The ultimate. He'd turn it back around on him, think he's going there in the safe, and it's all gone wrong. I mean, Batrider's already a great answer for Sven, so in a carry role, um, maybe that is the turnaround that they want to do. Yeah, they typically don't save Lil's hero for last, though. Well, a uh, lot of time left on the bands for Digital Chaos. What really like messes with their draft? Is there a certain type of hero that does? Messes with who's? With DCs. Uh, DCs, DCs, like stopping DCs the, the pressure that they can throw out? Or... Well, I guess it's just going to come out right now, and it's going to be the Life Stealer, another classic, one of his most played heroes. Life Stealer, bad. Yeah, it's, it's, he's like all physical. It's tough. Very yeah. tough matchup for him. They have global as well, so it's like great initiation. You know, you jump in there, you global. Maybe you just don't go on the Sven and you try and find pickoffs instead. Remaining. Yeah, he, the thing is, he can work out his whole team, and Five they have Darkseer too. Like Darkseer is really good at like stopping a jump on someone. Guardian so, Greaves builder too. Peel has been banned. They do expect the support carry last. I think Slark's actually pretty good. But I'm trying to think of other matches that are good versus Weaver or Batrider. Weaver is also pretty good here. Those two are probably the most common pickups versus Batrider. We see Jug sometimes, but Jug also not bad. I mean, any of those anti Batrider safe laners seem here. Yeah. Left themselves very open. I mean, that's the thing that's cool about this draft, too, is that, like, it, it feels like Quap needs to roam around a lot. So DK is going to have pretty free reign to push mid and then eventually take that tower when she leaves. So as long as you pick somebody survivable, they'll be good to go. Accurate. Yay. <laughs> gonna be? Maybe they want, I think they want more of a melee hero though, because I think when you have dark you want to make use of the ion shell. So heroes that can like get in there up close, personal Slark and jug. I would prefer. Also because um, Jug can build Manta, I think he holds extra value because you are Silencer. Or like Blink Abyssal late game against Quap too. Yeah. That type of style. I, I like that a lot. Jug sounds great. I mean, Ramsey's has a huge hero pool though. Yeah. And it still could be Lil Hero. It could be Troll too. Troll's also pretty... He's not a good matchup versus Batrider, but he owns Lifestealer. Like, Lifestealer would be useless. But not so good versus... I think Bat's actually the. I think Forev is very proficient. LVP getting down to the wire here. Maybe not so confident. Maybe it was the PL that they were hoping to take in that last pick. Uh, as it stands, it is instead going to be the Nyx Assassin. Okay, so they have swapped it up, and it will be Ramsey's Sven. I mean, Sven, Gary, I suppose. More expected it that it would be Ramsey's hero last. Wait, the DC banned out last. Pulling the old Swaparoo, the anti Nyx, and the <laughs> anti Quap. Yeah, that uh, that's pretty great. And obviously, against the Bat Rider, it's amazing. Um, I don't know. Do you do you like the pick? Do you think that they do enough early? Like they have kind of setups for Impale with with Glimpse back and stuff. But what's your thoughts? Whose draft do you like more? Trying to think about it, like if I didn't see the, I would say if I, if I didn't see the teams, I'd probably like VPs more. I think Life was going to struggle a lot the damage because of the, all this armor. Coming. He's a decent matchup versus Nyx, but he's actually not going to be versus Nyx much of the time. Nyx is a support role, and then Pasha is also going to have a really good time, I think, because I, how to silence or zone out the darks here. I don't think you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Um, well, game number two, getting ready to begin. DC versus VP, and still the favorites to take this one. I'm assuming for most people uh, all around the world are VP, who have just proven to be so hard to deal with, and have also put together a really strong draft here in this one. Um, so Bulba, he's going to lay down one of these wards over here to the side. Get a nice little block off on that camp. Uh, we will see if they're able to make it happen. Um, 
big early movements. Last time around, it was the clockwork that was important to make things happen mid with the Ogre also uh, babysitting that Viper. Where do you see these supports rotating to and roaming it, or is that even going to happen in this game? Just babysitting mid? Yeah. I don't really think you can roam too much. Disruptor is mediocre at roaming. Nick Sesson, mediocre too. I think maybe both of them combined, but I think they just want to make sure this Batrider has a really good game. Like you don't want him to get BKB this game. Like you want to prevent that, not at all costs, but just enough pressure on him in the early game so that you slow down his blink, which will slow down the mid game, and then slow down his BKB. Okay. Because the Knicks will destroy them. Knicks and Darkseer. That's, uh, that's a great combo that they have. Um, and on top of that, they have the Destructor Static Storm. But all of this gets countered by PKB. Ooh, Smoke was early from Solo to place the Observer the Ward begins. in the middle lane. And then perhaps to get the chick to kill you, you be able to do it. Dream. This would be such a great way to help out his mid laner and see if... Abed is actually, he is bringing something out right now, and they're not going to be fully expecting this. He's going to be going for the block instead on this Queen of Pain. Oh, no, the chicken. I think it is going to be going down here if he scouts it out in time, and we'll see if he can get the range on both hits. One, two, goes down. Not to salve as well. Nice. So that is some value out of your smoke. I... I really dislike it when some teams in early game, they don't buy the smoke early. Because smokes are so valuable in competitive play, and having starting the cooldown immediately at the start is really good. And starting the cooldown at the start and getting a chicken kill and a good observer ward down, <laughs> that's dream. Yeah, all the above. No one did get pushed back by the cogs, which means that uh, he's going to be low on mana through his first couple of waves until he gets that bottle brought all the way out. We'll see if Bulba can get a courier snipe too. Not likely. <laughs> but... Yeah, it is just going to be a little bit pushing back and forth here as Lil has moved into the mid lane to help out a little bit more. Well, Abed's lane secured at least for a little bit. I, I said that last game, and he got demolished. Oh, let's not jinx Abed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, it, it certainly wasn't good for him last time around. And for him, he's also being sort of bullied around a little bit here by Solo uh, that still are able to keep that Batrider back at least a little bit. And they're keeping the pressure on no one. Making sure that the, even though um, he's got the help from Lil, it's not the easiest time in the world. What pressure says his 18 goes in one cell? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He's got a hell of a lot of regen. Not That's way to do it. Dragon blood. Okay, so babysitting mid going on. No one actually... He's fine. Okay. He, he was sacrificing his HP for CS, which is completely fine when he had that much regen. I always get so nervous when I see those health bars get down low, particularly with the blinking hero like Quap, but with only level 2, it would have been pretty big death there, uh, probably jumping into tower range. Pasha able to get a good amount up top as well, 6 CS for him so far uh, in this off lane, and it's not quite the same level of uh, kill potential here as you see in the bottom lane with well, the Salter. That, that's still right. one. Yeah. That's the thing. That was with Solo starting off in mid lane at the, at the very early levels, which is generally when you would expect him to be able to get level 2, but it's like with that TP down to the bottom lane, he's been doing a very, very good job, Solo. Coming in, taking him down. First blood drawn by Ramses. Kinetic field and Thunderstrike. More than enough to punish that Batrider. That's one of those weird moments that you actually would have won the skill flame break instead. He was he fought, he was uh, up in the air. He was flying because of the firefly, but he actually couldn't move at all. He couldn't cliff you because of the uh, the kinetic heal. So if he pushes back to spin. Maybe he can get a kill. I haven't seen that build before, but I think in this one particular instance, it would have been better. Okay, but uh, I don't even know if it's worth the sacrifice not having firefly at two because then he can't even jump, which is what Forev is doing. That's such a tough lane. And you might even end up seeing one of these other heroes rotate in. It looks like Bulba is going to try and do whatever he can in this lane and pick up some levels. Uh, which is probably the right thing to be doing. But even he's going to have some trouble as Solo keeps on throwing out that Thunder Strike. Mid lane, it's Abed who's been left kind of completely alone at this point. But he's having a decent time. Although, as I say that, he's going to get caught out. Does have Blink and a Salve. But is holding on to it for the moment. That's right. Not even a chance of contesting four minute rune. 
Uh, MOBA battery assaulted is going to be running down solo at least a little bit for the moment, but with Forev only level 2 will not have any way to push him back in again. Ramsey's done have another stun here, and with the kinetic field already laid down, he threw it onto the Pat Rider, almost can connect onto him. He's so low HP, 35 in fact, but he'll be able to make the escape. Close call. Yeah, surprisingly for that there, but uh, Rev has a little bit extra. Well, mid lane, Quap continuing to max out the dagger. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about this since it's kind of no one constantly staying topped off on regen anyways? Well, then you have zero pressure, and you can't oh, outlast him. <laughs> the thing is, you can't outlast that Quelling Blade. That's, that's a big problem, I think, in this matchup for him. Like, yeah, you might have equal damage. Dragonite actually at 67, and Abed at 78, so Abed has 11 more damage. Both Quelling Blade, no one should generally win out in the CS war. And you need pressure from someone. But what coming in? There are a lot of heroes. Now Battery Salt pulling him back in there, although the stun came out. That does mean that no one will escape with the two rotations mid, not bearing fruit for DC. What a player no one is. How do you not die in that situation? And look at a CS now. Yeah. Um, they also spotted the smoke movement coming in from Dubu and Bulba, and they're actually going to run right into him. Solo can get the pullback if he wants to. He only has one point in glimpse, a little bit outside of range, actually. So that does mean that Bulba will make the escape, but now you have the two heroes mirroring their rotations, and DC, they're going to end up being pulled back in yet again. Can Forever stay alive long enough for the rest of his teams to get here and get in range? It looks like the answer is no. The cogs connect onto two. But that's just going to be more farm for Ramses. This is, they're just not really able to make stuff happen with these heroes like you were talking about. It's kind of hard with them. And no one is actually just so good, though. Like, his, his build, I think at the start, uh, kind of won him this lane. Remember when people always used to just buy, you know, you get pulled a couple of tangos, whatever, and then you bring yourself a self? No one didn't do that. He had three sets of regen. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Quap, yeah, you can spend all your mana harassing him, but then no one's going to come out ahead on CS, which is exactly what he did here. That's that's the thing. This dude is just so experienced in the mid lane that he knows all these matchups inside out. He can go for these different sort of builds. And, I mean, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal, right, having three sets of regen at the start, but I think in this particular matchup, especially with the way that it started with Clockwork just manhandling him and burning all his mana away, he should have had a way more difficult time. But right now, whacking on a tower, tower that heavy. Look at this guy. Dragonite player through and through, making Radiant's it work. And even forced the Queen of Pain out of lane. So, everything coming up right now, Virtus Pro. Uh, is there any lane that's going like really good? The Lifestealer is still getting decent CS for himself. Uh, is that something that, you know, is sort of what DC need to fall back upon? Mason, well, they don't, they don't care about happen? him. They have the Dragonite armor and they have the Sven armor. So, like, yeah. He, and they have Surge to even kite the open wounds if he even wants to cast it. So. I, I didn't like the pick at the start, and it, without their other cores doing well, like without the Batrider lasso for the Infest Bomb, how are they going to get kills? And with Queen of Pain not dominating the mid lane, I mean, she's not doing poorly, but I, I wouldn't say she's like, well. Not kind of in that in between phase. 5.5 out of 10. It looks like the Batrider, too, is trying to go back for the drum, so it's not. It's going to be a long time before that Infest Bomb comes out, or at least a brace uh, you know, going in for the, the Tranquils. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, about seven and a half minutes in, two and O is the score, but it's really the difference in net worth that's pronounced at this point. Shooting almost at that 4K mark. I think also the, the tower HP too. Like yeah. mid is at half HP, bottom tower is two thirds HP for digital chaos. So there are they, they are going to start losing objectives very soon, and they need time. Bat Rider needs to get his blink dagger, and Quap needs any items that she can get. Veil pretty much. I would say is imperative in this game, actually. Yeah. She needs the armor, and she, they definitely need more magic damage versus this lineup, so yeah. Well, maybe something can be made of it down here bottom. They're bringing in Boba. A good Cogs pushback, actually. is going to be able to keep Forever alive for the moment, and we'll see if they can find any more. Ramses is there as well. He's in the area right now with the battery assault, but they don't quite have level 6 yet on Forever. Only level 4. And so all they can do is keep him alive while mid lane, more action of Bruin. The catch was almost there. Abed taking the DOT, but it's not enough to kill him off. And he had the 12 stick charges anyways. Well, I think that might be his lost tower, though. Yeah. 
no one going to push the tempo. He has stick charges too. Uh, Could have popped them to free fire and maybe push this out a little bit quicker, but he'll still be there in time, I'm pretty sure. They want to come and contest, actually? Uh, they'll keep their tower alive oh, for now. Oh, bet actually didn't go all the way home. Just got a bounty room. I used those stick charges too while dropping everything, it looks like. Excellent. Yeah, he needs to stay around in this middle lane. Tower's at a quarter HP and just constantly goes low. But it's still a little bit of time up on Dragonite, but I don't think he's going to be able to get that last hit on the tower. Midas on Lifesteal. All right. We're doing it. I mean, if you need to catch up, right? <laughs> oh, he's up on Midas. Yeah. I think... It, I, I do like Midas versus the... The Dark Seer, you can just instantly Midas his creep and not have to deal with the Iron Shell. Nice. But it does slow your game, which is already a little bit slow. I guess he's maybe trying to match a time with Bat Rider, which is kind of cool. There it goes. Like, you don't want to go armor and like, oh, I'm ready to infest. And then Bat Rider's like, I need Blink Dagger and about 1500 gold, and I'll see you in about five minutes. And he's like, okay, well, I could have just farmed for Radiant's another five minutes with my Midas. So, <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Okay. We, we did see. Uh, oh, ooh. the. Search forward, looking for it. Do they realize? Oh, that would have been. Oh no! <laughs> that would have been the Midas too. That would have been devastating. Yeah, look at this. They placed down a, an observer ward in the mid lane here to try and see if they could snatch it off, and then over here as well uh, in the jungle. But now Radiant with Mason on top of Asha, he'll always have surge to get away, so doesn't really need to be that concerned. I wonder if they rolled low in their damage. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Oh no! This is going to be Queen of Pain dead, most likely. Solo is there, and they pull him back in. They will pop the glyph right now for the tower, but I don't think they have intentions of saving this. I don't think so. I don't think you can. Prev still a thousand gold away from his blink dagger. Uh, like we talked about, the Midas is done for Life Stealer now, so he's going to start to accelerate a little bit more in terms of his gold. And I guess that it is really just waiting for that that blink and. Uh, Infest bomb before any type of big play comes out for DC. Uh, but is Clockwork like I guess the other hero that can maybe find like a wraparound and kill? I don't know. It's tough. Ooh, I, I guess that's the problem. <laughs> no. Disruptor is not even vulnerable because he can just glimpse him back. So what's VP looking to do now? Then they've taken the first tower. Uh, get Nick six. He's okay. first. Once they get Nick Six, they can open up the map a little bit more. I would say they can probably make another attempt at the Bat Rider before he gets his Blink Dagger, or they could just farm up with Basket Madness Fen. That's also a pretty good option for them because he is excellent at taking out stacks. And look at this stack. It might be like a six stack. Wait, how many is that? One, two, three, four. It's only a four stack right now. So let's see if he gets a stack off. Only a four stack. My goodness. Well, he is going to finish it off now, and it looks like they actually uh, didn't keep Nyx around to get those levels. He's down bottom, where a lot of DC is, and Solo actually is going to scout out Dubu, uh, as well as Bulba. The glimpse comes out. He was able to trap him in the cog zone with the flame break pushback. This might be another plus two for Dubu, and something going right for DC. Much needed. First kill of the game. Hey. It's been a really slow-paced one. Yeah. We have Midas on one side, a Bat Rider on the same side who doesn't really have any items, and then you have a Sven on the other side, so kind of expected, I would say. But Radiant's middle let's tower see is under attack. what is going to happen soon. Darkseer has mech is under attack. if he wants to buy it right now. Uh, Sven doesn't have Blink Dagger, but I say once Sven gets Blink, they can actually start making moves. Dragon Knight has armor completed, so he's going to go. This is when the game's about to start to heat up. Don't you worry, Gabe. Oh, baby. Well, there's one thing. They already find one kill, and Dubu did end up getting the intel for that, but he's going to pay for it. They find another pick off here. Ramses with the Echo Saber, newly completed. So, a one for one exchange. I noticed that, that Ramses really likes the Agi Treads, he likes that attack speed. Hmm. Over double dipping into the strength or the god strength. It's pretty unusual. Oh god, we'll see if it pays off here. Abed. Oh, Man, look at how much damage he took. And that wasn't even with god strength used. It's just running at him with a stun. Make, making him live a life of fear, man. <laughs> I guess there is a little bit of maybe some mentality issues in there as well. You sort of. Make sure that people know you're always going to be coming at them. I mean, really, what did they use there? Just 
Yeah, I don't really think they need walls to go to team fights right now. They're pretty far ahead. So I think it's a, it's a good statement to be made. Yeah, you also like make them blow shrines and they don't really want to. Like I've been using that top friend of the fight or to, to heal up from that. So when you trade a wall for shrine, that's pretty good. Yeah, a lot longer cooldown on the shrine, that's for sure. And the tilt aspect. There you go. Uh, always underrated. Well, no one. DD Rune on the Dragonite with that Dragon Form enabled. The tower did not stand a chance, so two tier ones taken. And still, Sven continues to farm away. Everything is going good for VP here. I, I don't really see what it is that DC can do until they get those big items up. And Blink's almost up. Though. They're almost there, yeah. It's just a problem because they don't have the infrastructure to also deal with the deal with the next lesson. How do you deal with it when your supports are broke and your cores are broke? Yeah. Well, and not only that too, but maybe that initiation fully gets turned back around as well with the next assassin there and having Spike Carapace to just interrupt that rider. That would be sick. Okay, here they go. Forever. Let's see the smokes. It's time, buddy. It is time. Now, VP. Are they going to put themselves in a position to get picked off, too? Because if they're all together, it still feels like this net worth advantage could be kind of hard to deal with. And Pasha does have that mechanism completed. And he is TPing up top. Radiant this could be a tough scan. fight for DC, nonetheless, in spite of having those initiation items. They know something's up, though. No one's showing on the Dyer's map at all. They have pretty deep wards, too. Top. And they use a scan to cover mid. Dyer's so let's see. Is awesome. Lowe going to be able to pop the smoke? He actually isn't sure which direction it's coming from, but he knows it's coming from either the north or Dyer's just south of that. Has fallen. They're walking forward again. Bulba is there. The smoke breaks at least once. They drop down a ward and now a uh, sentry as well. So they are going to have eyes on Lil in just a second. We can see if they reveal them there. Let's look at Batrider okay. to the top side. Oh, he's looking. He's waiting. He wants this one badly. No one is going to be there. Abed as well. They jump forward. Catch on to him as well. Global follow-up. It's the perfect initiation. Is it the perfect target, though? Can they kill off no one? The answer is yes. And now Ramsey's left with nowhere more to go. Static Storm is down. VP, they're going forward. Bulba being the one who's going to sacrifice himself slightly. Already taken out again. Another vacuum back in. For Rev, is he going to be able to get out now? They're going to surge away. VP do not want to take this fight. If they can avoid it, and Pasha might be the one who gets left behind. Open Woods is there. Quick couple right clicks and the kill. DC back on the map. Excellent angle from approaching the Dragon Knight right there. That was really well played by them because they kind of... Excuse me. They, they feigned a maneuver from the south because you saw the clockwork uh, move up forward to place a ward. So when they're up in that jungle area, you expect him to come from the trees right above him just because it's very unusual for them to be separated that far out. And then what they actually did was, yeah, they faded the maneuver to the south and they wrapped around north with the with the lasso. And they weren't actually ready for that. Supports were way too far away. Yeah. They, they needed to interrupt the, the quap combo. You can't stop the life zone. He's already made. So the only thing they can stop is Quap from getting all her spells off. He was able to. Yeah, and it was enough to blow him up, showing that there's still decent damage on DC when they have all those ultis online. Uh, as far as VP is concerned, is that something that you need to be pretty concerned about at this point? Like your Dragonite dying? Um, I w didn't quite see what the interaction was with his armlet, if it was on at that time or not, but... No, he was able to get it off. I think what, yeah. what he might need is a hood or a BKB, which it looks like he's going for. Just some way so he doesn't die in the front line. But the problem is, if he builds tanky, then they'll just go on Ramses. So... What the... Big back... Be a shrine? Maybe? Rev is checking it. They know it's coming. Oh, man. If that was so close, so low. He actually does get the glimpse though, and there's the static storm, and it pulled the life stealer in as well. So he's gonna be stuck in this also. And can they catch him out? Can they kill him off? He's gonna get the rage TP away. That would have been huge. He almost got back. That was so close. Well, uh, now you're taking this fight without Firefly, without Lasso available. A lot harder for DC. They will have hookshot. Maybe Bulba can go for a snipe here. Pasha is trying to be that gatekeeper. Looking for the angle. Lil going for the impale. Pump fakes as well. They might scout him out. They wrap around. Lil is there again to break it out. 
And Bulba off to the side, jumps in. Can he get it? He's already down. Aegis is on the ground as well, but no one picks it up. And Bulba is going to drop. Sonic Wave comes out as well. They're able to get that lasso down onto one. That's no one still in a little bit of trouble, but do they have enough damage? Dyer is here. Abed is out of mana, and Lil able to make the escape. He's back in again for one. That's solo down as well, and no one. Can they kill him off twice? With the surge away, I think the answer is no. But DC, they strike back in a big way. Still a pretty good fight for them. Nice play by Bulba. He went so far around. He kind of suspected that they might have a ward over there with the way that he was moving. He went so far to the left side, and there were two heroes trying to block his hook, uh, hook shot. Yeah. Two heroes. That's really impressive, definitely. Yeah. That was a very nice play from Bulba. Set it all up. Oh, Lil actually getting slowed down by the ghost there for a second. He has Blink Dagger already? In Arcanes? He had that for the, for the Roche fight. Yeah. Oh my goodness, he's farmed. He did get a solo pickup. Oh, Pasha. Trying to run away from there. Can he make his escape? Bulba's chasing him down. Pretty swift, pretty quick. And is going to be able to catch him. Push back. BP losing another. Never mind. Ramses comes in mad as hell and takes him down. Oh, man. That's a pretty big guy. Hello, Mech. <laughs> it was looking so good for a second there, but Sven hit very hard, 10,000 net worth on him, and has that blink dagger done, and well, about halfway to the BKB as well. BKB is going to be an issue. A big issue, I would say. That looks like Abed actually is going to be going for the BKB as well, and Solo pulls him back in for the Static Storm. Can they get the rest of these heroes here in time? Ramsey shows up, blinks in. Do they have the counterplay, though? It's actually going to be Ferev lassoing Ramsey's, trying to make sure he escapes, and well, I, he's getting pretty aggressive. He's going to be pulled back in. A vacuum and a stun from no one. Ferev still able to live for this for the moment, but no, in the end. That Thunderstrike was too much. The end. Dead, dead. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it keeps on being like these very scrappy little engagements, and it always feels like Virtus Pro maybe a little bit more mobility, maybe a little bit more, uh, just like you were saying, ability to turn a fight around with like that Dark Seer and Mechanism and Vacuum and all that. You can be number one. So how big of an issue is this? What's the what's the sort of order of operations of the fight now? Um, like it's still going to be no one like sieging the tower, right? Uh, order up, it'll be similar except DC are going to try them try to kill them before they get their BKBs off, and VP is going to try and stop them from killing them before the BKBs off. Like drop static storm, drop your uh, do the counter initiation with vacuum wall. So I am skeptical of. DC's chances to actually kill them before the BP go on, especially if Warcry's up. I think that top fight, something smart that Ramsey's did also was pre-cast a Warcry. Normally you cast it reactively because it's not that high of uptime. Oh, Lil. Again, really good play. Freaking smoke. But pre-casting the Warcry, making sure that the fight would go well with high armor on all their heroes. Yeah, before the lasso comes up. That's the important part. If you don't get your spells off before Lazo, you're just gonna die. Especially uh, y your armor, you're, it's not like past. Oh, nice hook there, able to thread the needle and make his way around the Bat Rider. So no one's gonna be pulled in again for the moment. They do have Lil in the area. So I'm faking that, and the BKB finally comes out as well as the surge away. So one charge of it down. You could tell that he didn't want to pop it. Like I don't want to pop it. I don't want to pop it. <laughs> okay, I don't. I'd rather pop it than be dead. Which is the right mentality. Do you like the uh, the Deso pickup for Life Stealer as well? Sort of the the answer to the War Cry in a lot of ways. He's still well in the positives though with War Cry. War Cry is 20 armor. Deso is not even cool. Uh, so um, it does help with killing the supports, and it does help killing bursting them in that time frame before they pop into me. I think that's the most important part about Deso. You also have Dubu who's picked up a medallion, so there's more minus armor here to try and at least make things slightly better. Uh, but again, make, making all of that happen onto one hero, it feels like you're investing a lot into them, and if it doesn't work, then the rest of the team fight's just over. Yes. But, yeah, how do you... Uh, 
do you need to sort of wait for like that next Aegis to come back around for VP now, or what's? Uh, you still think they feel pretty comfortable just pushing down each of these lanes? Just push down each of these lanes and let Nick do his thing. Not died yet this game. So that uh, he's he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's moving around the map elusively, popping smokes, getting vision on heroes, getting easy solo pickoffs when he can, and just setting up generally very well for his team. And Lil is. I would say probably the most important player for their team right now. Like, he, him being able to make sure that his cores get farmed by where he leaves. Like, look at where he's scouting right now. He's like out in the back looking for a potential wraparound angle from the lasso and the life stealer bomb that they've been doing. But now he's like, okay, DC are just a bunch of pusses. They're going to stay inside the base because they don't want to lose the game right now. And BP are like, okay, well, we need to get more advantage and while they're still stuck in there. But he, he's scouting out from the potential wraparound angles from DZ. Because the fight could go really well. Blink Lasso into tons of bursts, like from Quap, before the BKBs pop off. That's that's the dream. But mm -hmm. if he gets his eyes on the Queen of Pain, uh, or it stuns her before her BKB, let's say, or if he gets his eyes on the Bat Rider, this fight going go so well. Oh, Global comes out. Oh, Bulba the hook shot in the perfect timing. They're able to find those two heroes, and Ramsey's waiting to jump back in the vacuum wall. The stun's there a little bit late. He's actually able to find the lasso for Rev, making the plays to keep his team alive. If they win it, this would be such a big combo for them. Mason is going to be dropped down, though. And Abed managing to get out for the moment. Can he escape Pasha? It looks like the answer is yes. That could have gone so much worse for DC. Well, the cores were sitting back. That's the thing. Uh, they were they almost set up with a big dark Sears, uh vacuum walls vacuum wall and the storm wall combo. that was really close but forever was even on the lookout for it he last with the Sven as immediately as soon as he blinked in but still they had to blow what two ultimates I think at the start to kill those two supports which was pretty good but they still did get some spells off it was also a disruptor buyback in the midst of that yep. so uh solo does that a lot but that's fine he has GPM talent what ifs <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good stuff. Um, yeah, it did show again uh, also the power of, you know, Darkseer Greaves in that. Um, being able to, you know, stay, uh, get out of the global and then, you know, return the, the damage in kind. Get the turnaround happening. Um, BKB charges down to eight seconds here as well. When those charges do start to get down to the five second mark, is that something to be pretty concerned about for Virtus Pro or is it like enough burst damage that doesn't really matter? If Quad gets bigger, it's a problem. So she's the one that can actually kite them. Top tower right now, she's not big enough. It doesn't really matter that much. He can still kill people in five seconds. That's for sure. Jason's coming through well. Still aren't really able to uh, do much more than take down those tier twos. Roche respawning in two and a half minutes now. So a relatively long respawn time. What you said when when Quap gets big, like is it we're waiting for for Shiva's guard, or is it like this Lincoln Sphere that's enough? Does she need to actually like output a lot of damage, or just stay alive for a long time in the fights? That's the bigger concern. Uh, she just needs to be threatening. Threatening means killing people before BKB, okay. or being able to blink on the back lines and kill the disruptor in the in the Nyx without being able to do it without having to expend that many spells like uh there's many ways she can be threatening she can hit level 25 and just be a tank that's also a pretty good way to be a threatening as queen of pain so yeah annihilating the supports or just being unkillable while doing damage, which is 25 or like you know if she gets like a scythe or something like that or orchid they can kill the nyx very fast the fight if she get a lincoln's she can doesn't have to worry about these two Targeted stuns coming out from the Sven and the Dragon Knight. Yeah. Look at Lil. He's right there again. He just he knows, knows exactly where they're coming from. He also scouted out that the ward just got taken there. So he realized they're all in that spot. And, well, they might be actually going for this. No one with the Haster and is walking in. Dubu not going to get caught there. And it looks like the rest of DC retreating back home. To make sure that they're all fine and dandy. They think that Roche is up right now, though. Or it could be up. VP are playing. Yeah. I guess that's the nice part about Clockwork, too. Making that scout happen constantly. And this is leaving a good amount of room for Abed to also uh, farm up and the lane push. How close is that life sailor to the AC? He's only 1,400 gold away. Yeah, he's actually starting to hit pretty hard. He might have paid off for him, I would say. It's been a relatively slower game for him. So he's... 
he hasn't like died. Like it, there wouldn't have been a fight where if he went another item instead of Midas, he they would have won the fight. I think that's that's kind of the ultimate test for the Midas. It's not how many times you used it, or if it paid for itself back in whatever amount of uses or whatever amount of time. It's would you have won a fight, a big team fight, uh, with a different item instead of Midas? Okay, and he's passed that test. Midas test. <laughs> like Midas some sort test. of chemistry thing. I love that. Will it turn to gold if I touch it? <laughs> Well, certainly not turning to gold right now is going to be Silencer brought down. He Going for dead. another team. That's true. He passed the Midas test. <laughs> the chemistry Midas test to the Silencer. He actually doesn't have buyback. So now your tier 3 tower is starting to get hit as DC. They're going to TP back with the lifesteal as well. And it looks like VP going to be more content to just go take down Roche and not push the envelope. So they only use Dragon but it'll still be up for a pretty long time. So pretty much everything up on both sides. Oh, no, war no, uh, oh, wait, they just used Godfrey for Roche. But here they go. Yeah, that just got scouted out as well. Two moves in the area. They have global as well. Yeah, walking forward, they get the stun though. There's the global silence that comes out to try and turn it back around. Bulba hook shots in, able to catch on to one. Forever is gonna eventually be brought back down. And now Ramsey's hitting hard on top of all of these heroes from the dire. DC is going to drop the blink away. We'll keep that quap alive for the moment. But four other heroes dead for DC. Great fight for VP. Pacha got all his spells off, and no one. Great blink there to get that stun on the Batrider. Again, you see the problem with the Batrider not having BKB. They they had that early, great early game prevented him from getting his BKB. You can see it on his quick buy next, but it's 30 minutes in. It's about the time that you want to have a BKB. But instead, he has, like, look how slowly he, like, went into the fight. He was, like, super scared. The Vix could have been on top of him. He could have gotten Blink stunned. He could have gotten Glimpse back. He could have gotten vacuumed even. Like, all these things are just so problematic for the Batrider when he doesn't have a BKB. Yeah. It really is tough, and that's why it was such a great last pick of that Nyx Assassin. Um, man, and I, I'm sort of struggling now to figure out, like, where is this next item that you're going to be getting? Because, like, DK is going to have a, a Halberd, and now you also don't have, like, the right clicks from the Lifestealer as much that's going to make the difference if it's, like, a 5-on-5. Five five. Well, the ACs cancel out by Spence AC. Yeah, that too. Invisibility. Well... Shiva's guard for the Quap. Quap 25 is the next stage. Okay. Uh, uh, then they can out. They can outlast the BKBs. Right now they can't. Like their whole team just got slaughtered inside the BKB. So get the 25 on Quap. Try and s survive until then. But it looks like the high ground push is coming right now. They have to deal with this. So lassoing to the T4s is generally the play. But I actually think they have enough armor that that might not even be enough. Yeah. 300 health talent as well for DK. Didn't go for the GPM. Signal that they want to try and end this game right now. They've already thrown the medallion on him. The wraparound call has come. Can they actually even do anything to this DK? And if they drop everything on the Aegis, what's left afterwards? Oba, Rev looking for that opening. They want to try and separate, make sure that that Static Storm doesn't come out, and they have caught the Disruptor. No one manning up against Macy. He jumps inside of a creep, keeping himself away for the moment. Sonic Wave is already out as well from Abed. Is he going to end up dropping down? Already so low, but the Blink Away does come, and no one starting to fall as well. Boba is keeping that little bit of distance. He was disarmed for the moment, the Life Stealer, but now he's turning to fight, trying to bring down Ramses, trying to see if they can finally find something for themselves, and in fact, it is going to maybe be him dying. He is going to instead take down Boba from the right clicks. No one's back up. The Impale comes through. VP making it happen, but they have lost three as well. We'll see if DC can clean up here. At the very end is Nyx Assassin. You will Scepter to keep himself alive. No one turns. He's still hard to kill off. Now well, it looks like is going to get the TP out. Wow, how do they not lose additional heroes there? Uh, they did have the cheese, but it was on the dark here, not the Sven. So Sven had no ages and no cheese, and he actually was caught in a really bad place because of where Disruptor is. They went in to try and save him, uh, but not enough, not enough items right there. A cheese pot would have maybe even been uh, like two sets of racks right there. It had sort of had that feel of a fight that was teetering on the edge of just like swinging one way or the other, and they kind of ended up, I mean, obviously a DC big win taking down the Sven, but um, still they did end up losing the range racks. About as best you could hope though, right? Yeah, they, they had to use a lot of the shrines. They were fighting right underneath the shrine. 
So Quap survived that fight too. That was that's pretty important for her that she was able to blink in and survive until her next fight. That's very bold, and she does have a lot of armor, but Sven is mega far quicker. Oh, Pasha there trying to catch the Bat Rider, but it doesn't end up happening. Solo and no one together on a warding mission. They'll maintain some good vision, and with no Aegis. I mean, VP, do they take time to have a little bit of pause and get into their next Tries. items, or you just go again? Tries first. Okay. Dyer's bottom yeah, their BKBs are getting a little dangerously low, you mentioned earlier, whether or not it would be an issue. And it will be an issue if Quap continues to scale. Quap, surprisingly, has only died one time this game up on Onbed, but he's still quite a bit of ways from a level 25. Well, take a look. Like you said, those shrines are fallen. There's actually no one right in front, and he is going to go for the stun immediately. Dubu is here as well. The global comes out, and actually the turnaround. They have lifesteal here as well. Bulba is able to separate them on the other side, and it's actually going to be Disruptor dropping the Static Storm onto a BKB Abed. He's alive for the moment. Lifesteal is still being contained, though. Can he get away? It's not going to happen. Forever is going to fall also. They do have buybacks if they want to use them. I don't know if VP want to push the envelope. Actually, going to jump forward and catch Quap. Is the stun going to be enough? No. Quap is able to blink away. And Cheesy, that's the play now. They want to make sure that they take this other lane of barracks, rather the melee barracks. Bye back. Bulba, hook shot on cooldown, 20 seconds. No way for him to get there. So they force the buyback on the Bat Rider and then retreat back home. Oh no. Dreams of a BKB. <laughs> yeah. Cheese for a buyback on Bat Rider, that's pretty worth it, yeah. I I'd rather have BKB than neither of those. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think worth it. That was that was a bait by them. They didn't they thought they could kill the quab because they have a lot of stun. Oh, they just had a simple four step. I guess and Global Sun really prevent that from happening. Oh, and Sven yeah. was attacking the shrine, which DC were well aware of. Right. Dubna now has been able to build into a full Solar Crest also, uh, which I don't think there is an answer for at this point. Abed, they're waiting. The stun comes out. I don't think that they can kill here. Uh, maybe with actually the DK showing up, but no, Abed's just going to pop BKB and blink away. Safe play. Speaking of five second BKBs. <laughs> uh, we'll have that Maelstrom at least. He said, still no death. I mean, it, the next Roshan, if you don't end the game there, is that where things get a little bit testy for VP? Or are they going to be pretty comfortable fighting even into the late game? I think fairly comfortable. They still have uh, room to grow on the DK, and DK's 25 is also really, really good. But I think they are looking at the game right Ooh. now. As you mentioned, with the health talent versus the TPO, you know they're going to try to end the game very quickly. This is pretty big. DC knew that they were there. They dropped this ward down in vision of the sentry. And so they were able to stay back, make sure they didn't get picked off. No one gets open wounds, but no damage dealt, so we can blink away. Power still, rather. Barrack's still standing. A good stun comes out, breaking it out. Bulba jumps in as well. He's in a little bit of trouble. Abed's jumped into everybody and, well, might need to blink away in a second since he's already being slowed down. They don't find the secondary stun. No way to do it through that BKB. I think that was a big mistake by Mason. He didn't kill the Observer War with Rage. That Observer War gave no one division to stun him, but as he points in. Oh no, and now a triple kill for Ramses. Yeah, they're just blowing him up and with no buybacks online, what was looking like a, on the verge of a comeback has been crashed back to reality. 16,000 net worth lead in Grimey as it's a second lane of barracks and maybe even a third. Better game for them this, this game. One of the problems with playing as VP, you don't exactly know what heroes are in what position. So the last thing Nick did render this Bat Rider fairly useless. I would say even more than Carapace. It was his vendetta, just running around, popping the smokes, making the fights incredibly difficult for DC to take. Also, it ruined it ruined the early pick quad. So nice uh, switch up from Virtus Pro, and of course, solid play from uh, their cores. I would say Ramses in particular, I think, played very well. And no one, too. No one had... He, his tower sieging tactics were spot on. I want to see if he keeps playing heroes like that throughout the tournament. That dude the can way. play like anything. 
yeah that's the, the cool thing is like if this is what they think is the best or uh, we'll end up switching around but that's going to